Hey everyone, Miss Fisher here, and today we're going to be reading a story on Epic. It's called Girls with Guts, The Road to Breaking Barriers and Bashing Records. Let's get started. Look at you, springing, kicking, dribbling, and pitching it down the pike. Girl, you are amazing. It's hard to believe that there was a time when girls were not encouraged to play sports. It's true. Athletic programs funded by the US government were once only for boys. That was the rule. Girls were told no chasing, no stretching, no kicking, no pushing, no splashing, and never ever sweat. Historically, the boys only rule goes way back to the early days of civilization. That's right, in ancient Greece, women were executed just for watching the early Olympic games. No girl competitors allowed, men only. Still, girls said, try and stop us. And they ran foot races in private festivals for Hera, queen of the gods. Later, in 1896, during the first modern Olympic games, female marathon -er Lumpy made officials eat her dust. Denied the opportunity to compete, she defied the rules by running the entire race alongside the men. When refused entry onto the field for the final lap, Malumphy ran around the entire stadium instead. The race to breaking barriers was underway. People feared that active women would develop wild-eyed, jet-jawed bicycle face, destroying their feminine appeal. In the late 1800s, Frances Willard challenged these and other Victorian beliefs by learning to ride a bike she named Gladys, scandalous. In 1892, basketball was a boys game, considered too strenuous for tender girls. But nothing stopped Senda Burson Abbott from owning the court. A teacher at Smith College, Senda adapted the men's rules so daring girls could play. Their court was shorter. The rules were limiting. No fast breaks, no bumping. Three bounces only. And long bloomers were a must. These pioneers competed when others said they shouldn't or couldn't. 09, polo playing Eleonora Sears shocked society when she boldly rode astride wearing pants rather than a skirt to compete in public. In 1926, Gertrude Eldry became the first woman to swim the English Channel, soaking the notion that females were athletically inferior to men. Unashamed and self-assured, courageous female athletes pressed on, even when folks tried to squash their competitive spirit. In 1928, Margaret Gilso competed as the only girl on an American Legion junior baseball team. This 14-year-old moxie made headlines, bunting, sliding, stealing, beating the boys. Her team adored her. Her opponents deplored her. You don't belong here, they shouted. No girls allowed. Eventually, league directors barred Margaret and any other girl from playing as an American Legion junior. Still, female athletes kept coming on strong. At age 12, Athlena Gibson was a champion ping pong player, the best in all of New York City. Then she traded her paddle for a tennis racket. Athlena dominated the court during the civil rights movement. When blacks were struggling to gain equal rights in the US, Athlena became the first athlete of color to win a Grand Slam title, smashing gender and racial discrimination lines by taking the French Open in 1956. Talk about guts. Donna DeVaron joined the 1960 Olympic team as the youngest swimmer at age 13. Competitive, disciplined, and persistent, she bashed time-tested records and became known as the most outstanding female athlete in the world. Donna's future shone brighter 
than her gold medals. Sadly though, competitive swimming ended for this deserving athlete after four years on the Olympic team. Donna never made a collegiate heat sheet. If she wanted to swim in college and get an education, she would have to pay for it herself. At that time, athletic scholarships were for boys only. That was the law and the barrier ripe and ready to be broken. At the onset of the 1970s, valiant warriors came together to fight the unfairness. First woman, Edith Green, stepped up to the plate to challenge athletic injustice. She teamed up with Shirley Chumsum, Patsy Mink, and scores of others who took a solid stand against educational, athletic, and financial discrimination with federal funds. Enough, they said. Equal rights for girls and boys. Game on. Lawmakers debated. Marches were organized. The valiant fighters would not quit. They insisted that girls should not and would not be shut out from equal academic and athletic opportunities being allowed to boys only. Placing limits on the intellectual aspirations of women should be alien to the very basic concepts of this nation, Edith said. And she meant it. Discrimination was doomed. Still, debates were held. Hostilities were hurled. After a long, grueling battle, a new law was passed in 1972. Title IX mandated equal treatment for competitive girls. The law states, basis of sex be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any educational program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. At long last, girls had proper equipment, locker rooms, practice fields, and strong coaches for one and all. There was no more boys-only favoritism under the federal law. Yet, the battle for equality raged on. In the same year the law was passed, 11-year-old Marie Pepe had pitched in just three games before New Jersey Little League officials refused to let her continue competing with the boys. The New York Yankees said, that's crazy. Why shouldn't girls play baseball? Officials believed the league developed qualities necessary for boys only. They thought fragile girls would get hurt. Well, Judge Sylvia Pressler would not stand for it. She and others went toe to toe with the league and won. New Jersey became the first state to bar sex discrimination in Little League. Eventually, the majority of the Little League chapters granted girls the right to play in either league, sanctioned baseball or softball games. In time, female athletes began to experience equal treatment, changing the athletic world forever. A new generation of female athletes dominated the 1996 Olympics. Team USA crushed opponents from all over the world and became known as national heroes. These women were deemed Title IX babies, triumphant female competitors born around the time the law was passed. Thanks to Title IX, they were forever free to play like a girl at the Olympics and in professional, private, and epidemic leagues across the country. It's hard to believe that there was a time when girls were not encouraged to play sports. Today, thanks to gutsy girls and legends who changed history, you're free to stomp, jab, tackle, grind, and sweat. Anything you please. Look at you. Springing, kicking, dribbling, and pitching it down the pike. Girl, you are amazing. And here's a timeline of all the events. It's a little bit small but it tells all the events. Here's some more. And then here's an author's note that says, what does it really mean to play like a girl? All right, my friends, that is the end. 
Hey everyone, Miss Fisher here, and today we're going to be reading a story on Epic. It's called Girls with Guts, The Road to Breaking Barriers and Bashing Records. Let's get started.